How's it going, people? I'm up at Mount Hope visiting mom in her guest room, the, the red room. <laughs> Thought I'd get a, another chapter of the book of Helaman out of the way. I'm almost done with Helaman. I can't wait. Maybe I'll finish it up here. I've decided how long I'm staying. Oh, and, uh, Yep, same as a mountain. Same name. All right. Chapter 13 of the Book of Helaman. Yeah, it's got a few sips in it. Oh, uh, in bold uh, italics, the prophecy of Samuel the Lamanite to the Nephites, comprising chapters 13 to 15 inclusive. Something to look forward to. Some guy who pops into the story and then pops right back out again and delivers some repetitious dialogue. All right. Well, let's get it started. Samuel proclaims his prophecies from the city of Wall. Okay, another Samuel. Isn't that the Name of, name of Joseph Smith's younger brother, Samuel. The sword of justice to fall on fourth generation. Nephite cities spared for, for sake of the righteous. Land to be cursed. Slippery treasures. <laughs> One, and now it came to pass. <sighs> Mighty taste. In the eighty and sixth year, the Nephites did still remain in wickedness. Yea in great wickedness. While the Lamanites did observe strictly to keep the commandments of God according to the law of Moses. Two, and it came to pass That in this year, which is like BC 6, there was one Samuel, a Lamanite, and came into the land of Zarahimla and began to preach unto the people. And it came to pass. Same verse. That he did preach many days repentance unto the people, and they did cast him out. And he was about to return to his own land. Three. But, behold, the voice of the Lord came unto him, that he should return again, and prophesy unto the people <coughs> whatsoever things should come into his heart. For, and it came to pass, that they would not suffer that he should enter into the city. Therefore he went and got upon the wall thereof, 
and stretched forth his hand and cried with a loud voice and prophesied unto the people whatsoever things the Lord put into his heart. Five. And he said unto them, Behold, I, Samuel, a Lamanite, do speak the words of the Lord which he hath put into my heart. Could have left those other parts out. Just said that right there. We'd have got it. And behold, he hath put it into my heart to say unto this people that the sword of justice hangeth over this people. And four hundred years pass not away, save the sword of justice falleth upon this people, as it did. <laughs> Foreshadowing of the next chapter. The next book, excuse me. Six. Yea, heavy destruction awaiteth this people, and it surely cometh unto this people, and nothing can save this people, save it be repentance and faith on the Lord Jesus Christ, who surely shall come into the world, about six years, and shall suffer many things, and shall be slain for his people. Seven. And behold, an angel of the Lord hath declared it unto me. And he did bring glad tidings to my soul. And behold, I was sent unto you to declare it unto you also, that ye might have glad tidings. But behold, ye would not receive me. 8. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, because of the hardness of the hearts, of the people of the Nephites, except they repent, I will take away my word from them, and I will withdraw my spirit from them, and I will suffer them no longer, and I will turn the hearts of their brethren against them, 9. And four hundred years shall not pass away before I will cause that they shall be smitten. Yea, I will visit them with the sword, and with famine, and with pestilence. 10. Yea, I will visit them in my fierce anger. And there shall be those of the fourth generation who shall live of your enemies to behold your utter destruction. And this shall surely come except ye repent, saith the Lord, and those of the fourth generation shall visit your destruction. So you're going to punish them for now. Eleven. But if ye will repent, and will return unto the Lord your God, I will turn away mine anger, saith the Lord. Yea, thus saith the Lord, Blessed are those, they, blessed are they, who will repent and turn unto me? 
But woe unto him that repenteth not. Twelve. Yea, woe unto this great city of Zerahimla. For behold, it is because of those who are righteous that it is saved. Yea, woe unto this great city, for I perceive, saith the Lord, that there are many, yea, even the more part of the great, this great city, that will harden their hearts against me, saith the Lord. 13. But blessed are they who will repent, for them I will spare. But behold, if it were not for the righteous who are in this great city, behold, I would cause that fire should come down out of heaven and destroy it. 14. But behold, it is for the righteous sake that it is spared. But, behold, the time cometh, saith the Lord, that when ye shall cast out the righteous from among you, then shall ye be ripe for destruction. Yea, woe be unto this great city because of the wickedness and abominations in her. And I'm drinking to abominations. I need to get some more beer. Yeah, we'll see. Fifteen. And woe be unto the city of Gideon for the wickedness and abominations which are in her. Damn it. Sixteen, yea, and woe be unto all the cities which are in the land around about, which are possessed by the Nephites, because of the wickedness and abominations which are in them. And behold, a curse shall come upon the land, saith the Lord of hosts, because of the people's sake, who are upon the land, yea, because of their wickedness and their abominations. And I'm going to cut it off right here and finish this in the next video. Damn time limits. YouTube has smitten me. <laughs> Stay tuned. Please. You might regret it, but I'd like it if you did.